was of a tree always starts by planting the seed. And that seed was planted by Educational Cooperation Society, which is a foundation with the purpose of um, developing projects of an educational and social nature that, based on Christian principles and ideals, the period of 10 years it developed three different projects, one in one in Lagos, one in Nepatan, one in Ijebu. Educational Cooperation Society had a strong board of patrons that had contributed to developing the projects. Nigeria was passing from a period of oil boom to a period of oil boom. Companies had to keep sending people to study abroad. Those courses were okay, but they had no relevance to the conditions of the country. So they needed an institution in the country that would have the same international standards, but will be relevant to the Nigerian environment. Those were the ideas came in. The first drive for excellence was when we had to institute a business school that had international standards. We had to see how other business schools operated and the level of excellence they had. So that means it was a drive for excellence in buildings, in materials that we use, in the level of attention that we give, in the level of preparation for classes. Because of those behind Lagos Business School, the Board of Trustees, Board of Governors at that time, made up of eminent Nigerians of high integrity and uh, people you look up to who are like mentors. Chivakin Kugwe, Dichukuba Demola, and you know, the Kramer, who is still around, thank God, uh, alive that is, and a, a number of others, uh, Professor Alos and Co. Um, association and affiliation with Lagos Business School at that time, for me, was uh, something to be looked up to and forward, and one wanted to be part of it. Um, there were, there was a lot of talk about integrity, a lot of talk about formation in the corporate sector, getting Nigerian uh, managers to look at things properly. And thus, the, that initial pioneering group of uh, CEP1, Chief Executive Program 1, um, I was privileged to be amongst people such as Pascal Dozi, Fola Deolar, uh, Aladi Komo of Chams, uh, Tutu Adeleke, um, Danjuma, not General, his brother. Uh, and, um, you know, the idea was to see how we can create a core of Nigerian businessmen, especially managers, who had integrity and who would uh, be mentors to those coming after us. And um, I was fortunate to be myself and one or two others uh, among that group. We coined up the phrase that became uh, the mantra of Lagos Business School, that is the Oasis of Sanity. Um, and uh, we, we saw Nigeria at that time as having been a, a, a desert place, a place where things were not working, uh, uh, corruption and you know, the like. And we thought the Lagos Business School was like an oasis in the midst of this desert. Incidentally, I was, as a, law, a young lawyer, um, part of the, the process in its early formation um, when there were challenges um, with regard to setting up a business school um, affiliated with a foreign institution, uh, with the Nigerian University Commission. Um, and that was my first um, interaction with uh, the, what became Lagos Business School. Um, since then, of course, it's grown by leaps and bounds. It's become one of the foremost um, management institutions in, in the world, I would say. Certainly the foremost in Africa. Um, but if you look at the global rankings, uh, very highly respected global rankings. It's amongst the top 50 business schools in the world. And I think that's a huge achievement um, given its modest beginnings 30 years ago. The Alumni Association uh, came on as a bank. We believed that the association would have a lot of impact on, uh, on the way you know, corporate governance how many people have gone through the Lagos Business School at various levels? They have chief executive programs, MBAs, CEP1, CEP2, you know, from almost all the industries and other corporations in this country. I used to joke with 
my colleague just said, you know, if we decided that every member of Lagos Business School Alumni Association, hands down, and no, no, no work for one week, the, the economy will, will be shaken. Because it means that all the major companies in this country will not have uh, the key staff to operate. That is the, 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 the influence the school has managed to gather. Somehow many didn't see where all this was headed, but I could see it. And the reason I could see it was because I noticed at that time that those who had responsibility for actualizing the vision were people who really were very focused in what they wanted to accomplish. And when I say what they wanted to accomplish in anything they did, the intellectual slant that came in at the time and the way they looked at the possible impact of an entity like this. Both the Lagos Business School and then Pan-Atlantic University have been like a constant challenge to, to me. Originally, I was a professor of taxation. It was because of the challenge of LBS that I got involved in business ethics and eventually became a professor of business ethics. Again, I would have been quite happy just being a professor, but well, then I was asked to move into administration, the, first to, to be the deputy dean and then the, the dean of the school. It's something that I didn't think I would do well, but somehow it was in response to that challenge that I had to somehow try and raise to the occasion. And the same thing happened when I was asked to become the vice chancellor of the university. Again, it was also, also unexpected. But again, in, in the process of trying to rise to the challenge, all of us also professionally developed. I think that is the experience of any of any professional, that 50%, 70% of what you have achieved in your profession was not something planned, but something that is the result of responding to challenges. And I must say, LBS always posed plenty of challenges. When we entered into the Financial Times of London ranking, and in 2007, we became racked as one of the top 50 business schools in the world in the area of open enrollment, executive education. That, to me, marked one of the biggest turning points of Lagos Business School because we now got on the map and got the attention of the global management education and executive education body. And it affected us even in Nigeria positively to the extent that now that we were classified as one of the top most business schools in the world, we saw an increase in the clientele. The role that I occupy has given me an opportunity to see LBS from nearly every perspective. Our mission is focused on developing responsible managers who see management and leadership as service. And therefore, what we've seen happen all through the years, especially with the alumni body, is one in which they have embraced that philosophy and run with it on their own. I actually joined LBS in 1995, March 17. My background is hotel and catering management. I manage the affairs of how the food is being prepare the quality so that our customer can actually enjoy it. Basically, this is what I do, but it entails more than this. There are so many paperwork, you know, from making the menu up, knowing the number of participants from the executive education or the MBA, that's where we get the calendar from, to know who we are serving, the number, and their timing, which is very important to us, so that the facilitators don't overshoot and then if they ever overshoot and we do not take cognizance of it, the cafeteria will be in a chaos. We call it World War III. 
which is not LBS quality. We do training regularly so that we can meet up with the international standard. And like LBS School, it's also a training institution, so we cannot be left behind.